Y'all, Zita's sick. We gotta fix her. Alright, so Motomantha here, and we're in the garage. So, I was riding Zeta to work, and then I was riding Zeta home. And going about 60 miles an hour on the causeway, which is a fairly long, it's probably like two mile long bridge over the ocean. And she just shut off and started slowing down my thought was alright so I gotta switch to the reserve tank and pulled over um, you know switch the pet cop to the reserve and tried to crank her nothing 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 and she's been that way but we're gonna figure out how to fix her so this would be a perfect opportunity. I'm not really going to show you guys how to change anything or do anything that I really know how to do already. It's a little different than if you go and you, and you buy uh, new blinker lights because you want cool new blinker lights on your bike. Then you go, you buy them, and then you just you put them on. But when something doesn't work on the bike, this is where you've got to start to think like a mechanic. I'm not a mechanic, but I, I have a mechanically inclined mind. I really enjoy, I mean, this is frustrating me, don't get me wrong, but I enjoy the thought process and the analysis that goes into figuring out how to make this all stuff, all this stuff work together in harmony. So you need three things for an engine, right? You need spark, air, fuel, and compression. I have already taken the carburetor off, which is why you now see the carburetor rejet and rebuild video. I've taken the carburetor off, I've cleaned the carburetor, I've rejetted it, I've uh, changed all the um, needles, gaskets, blah, 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 the springs, and put the carburetor back on the bike. So the next thing that I'm checking for is spark. I've noticed that, you know what? And this would be a good opportunity for me to show you how to, to um, test your spark plug. So, that's the next thing that I tested for was the spark. The spark on the bike was a light yellow color. And I want the spark to be like a white color or a blue color. And it to just be very strong, very present. When you hit that starter and it clicks over, it's just, ch -ch -ch, you see it. It's evident. Right now, when you turn it over, it's like, so I've got to figure out why I've got a weak spark. We're going to get the manual. We're going to start tweaking things. We're going to start testing stuff. And you guys are going to kind of, as you're seeing, I'm going to put these up in little episodes. And As you guys are seeing this stuff, if you know what the hell is going on, maybe you can give me a hand. Or if you've got a similar issue, this can just teach you a little bit about the diagnosis pro or the diagnostic process. I'm going to be using a multimeter. I'm going to be using the manual and just retracing my steps and seeing in a um, like deductive reasoning this just kind of backing all the way back to the problem it's a mouthful alright so what we're gonna do is test the spark plug disconnected the negative on the terminal I've removed the tank I will put a link in the dis or uh, a card up here uh, for you to learn how to take off the tank and then I'm going to remove the spark plug boot. I've undone uh, the negative cable. And we're going to back the spark plug out, put it back in the boot. I'm going to get a pair of pliers just to be safe so I'm not holding this directly. We're going to take the spark plug, put it back in the boot, and we're going to touch the spark plug to the end of the, at the edge of the engine. It's got to be a piece of metal that's not painted. It's got to be a ground. You're grounding out the spark wire so that way when it can complete the circuit. When we hit that uh, starter switch, we're going to see the spark 
in the spark light in the spark plug to test it. Alright, so here's the spark plug. This has already been properly gapped, and this is also a brand new spark plug, so I know that this spark plug is good, as you see. The proper gapping for this spark plug is 0 0.031 to 0.035. So as you see, that's like 0 0.034. Right. So if you're doing this by yourself, what I like to do is you're going to have to have um, the clutch pulled in so that you can hit the starter button and hold the uh, spark plug and you don't have three hands. So I'm going to take this and wrap it around. See? This is my least favorite thing to do on a motorcycle or on any vehicle. I don't like testing the spark plug. There's just something about it that makes me a little uneasy. All right. So as you saw, I'm going to try and clip this so you can see it really well, because you're not going to see it really well. Zeta's spark is weak. I've got to figure out where. So it's time to pick up the manual. But what I went for. All right, so what I went for is uh, just in the troubleshooting chapter, if you notice right here, it's showing to do and telling you to do the exact test that we just did. And then right here, it states, if spark is not good, check for one or more of the following. Weak ignition coil, weak ignition signal generator, weak or faulty igniter unit broken or shorted high tension lead to the spark plug loose electrical connections loose or broken ignition coil ground wire all right let's do it that's what we're doing all right so one of the things that that book just mentioned to do was to check the I've disconnected the negative cable again so that way when I'm touching all this stuff I don't get shocked or short anything out so this is the high voltage lead coming from the coil to the spark plug and inspecting it for any loose fraying or damage or anything like that and it looks like it's in good shape so now I want to test this guy so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the multimeter out. I'm going to open the book and see what it's supposed to be reading. And then there's one bolt here. Or, I'm sorry, that's a screw. And one screw here. And then you'll notice that here's a, a connector and another connector. So we'll take those off too. So I took it out for um, editing purposes, but I did have to use that impact driver on uh, these screws. I'm telling you, that thing, is when you own a motorcycle, it, it, just any vehicle in general, but especially a motorcycle, it's so imperative to have an impact driver. So there she is, and I'm going to test to see how she's doing. Fuel emission, electrical... It's either going to be seven or eight. I'm thinking it's going to be eight. Brake lights. Oh, I'm going to be wrong. 
Oh, ignition coil. Bam. Okay, so we're going to hook up the multimeter. And the book says that we need to hook it up to just the very first in the ohms resistance. So we're hooked to right here. Let me turn it on. Got my leads in. And we're looking for a reading between 1 and 7. Between these two coils. Or connectors. Whatever. Alright, so, oh shit. I'm going to say that's definitely between 1 and 7. Okay, so that's that's good. Then we're going to set it to 150,000 ohms. So I'm going to go to the 200,000. And test between the inside of the boot and any one of these connectors. And we're supposed to get, what are we supposed to get? Between 10,000 and 25,000. Twenty-three. Well, that's between 10 and 25. So we know this is good to go. The problem is not this. I'm getting eaten alive. All right, so we know it is a spark issue so far. Spark issue, and we know that the issue is not coming from the coil itself, nor is it coming from, well, and we know it's not coming from this wire because we did that test from one of these all the way to the end, so we know that there's no breakage throughout the system. That is how you test for spark, and that's how you test your ignition coil. So check in with me next week. I'll take you guys on the next section that I'm going to check out to figure out what the hell's wrong with Zeta. Wish me luck. Leave me any suggestions, comments, questions down below. Uh, other than that, you know the drill. Stay safe. Consider subscribing, like, share, all that good stuff. Moto Mantha out, and I'll see y'all next week.